We're having like a Home Alone situation. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash leg beard stories. Heck yeah. We got a dude and he dated a leg beard out of pity for like three years. We got three parts to this story. Supposedly there was supposed to be some more parts, but it looks like OP has kind of given up on it, which is okay, you know. You don't necessarily want to live in the past or anything like that. These posts might be a little old, but they are definitely just as delicious as something that is completely fresh. <laughs> so I hope that you will join me on the journey. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into this leg beard cringe. I dated a leg beard out of pity for three years. <laughs> You're a patient man, OP. Okay, so let me say that I love this sub and I've been thinking of posting this, but I wasn't sure until I really thought about it. And since this lasted for three years, I have a lot of stories from this regrettable part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so to start off, I'll tell how we met, how we became friends, and then I'll explain how we started dating in the first place. Here are the characters. Gay boy, GB, socially awkward, and was confused about my sexuality at this point in my life. Way too friendly and hate to disappoint people. And we've got Twilight Beard, a skinny girl who I would run into and had a locker next to. She smelled like she hadn't showered in years and almost never shaved her legs. Almost never? <laughs> she was really into Twilight, fantasy, and anime. She also always wore the same hoodie that she never seemed to wash. This is our leg beard, if you weren't privy. <laughs> so all this started in the 8th grade. I was putting my locker things away when I smelled something like a skunk that had decided to die in the hallway. I then felt someone staring at me, so I turned to my right and see Twilight Beard looking at me with a smile and her hands behind her back. After a few minutes, I was getting uncomfortable, but then she spoke up. Twilight Beard, Hi, I'm Twilight Beard. I jumped when she yelled it because I was not expecting her to speak. OP, uh, hi, I'm Gay Boy. <laughs> Twilight Beard, So, I'm just gonna say this to you now. I've seen you a lot last year and I was just unable to stop staring at you. At this point, I had no idea what to say. Most people wouldn't. That was when the last minute bell rang and I just slammed my locker, said, nice to meet ya, and left with the feeling of her just drilling her eyes into the back of my head. This continued on for a few weeks until we'd started to talk about some things we had in common, like video games, books, and other nerdy things. At times, though, she would just randomly start talking about sex with a gym teacher we had. <laughs> <laughs> Or a bunch of other weird cringy shit. I think that's like above and beyond cringy, dude. That's like highly illegal. <laughs> I just brushed it off and I also learned how to breathe through my mouth without making it noticeable while I was around her. Around halfway through the year, she was clinging to me after school while waiting for our rides like usual. And then she looked over at me. OP, send the wrong Twilight Beard? You look like something's on your mind. Twilight Beard. Hey, can I tell you something? She then leaned in and whispered in my ear. I love you. <laughs> I was kind of shocked and I didn't know how to react or what to say, quickly becoming a theme. After literally two seconds of her telling me that she loved me, she looked upset, got up and just ran off with me left sitting there confused. I then looked around to see people looking at me like I was an asshole, so I sighed and ran after her. I found her in a corner crying, and I asked what was wrong. Twilight Beard, That was such a huge mistake! I hate myself so much right now! No one loves me, and it's just so stupid to think that someone like you would actually love me back! I was just getting more confused, and I began to panic in my head. I needed to do something. 
because this looked like a scene in a movie because a few girls that we were near were now glaring at me. So I took a deep breath. OP. <sighs> Twilight Beard, don't say that. I just needed a second to process what you said. You know, I can't hear that well. I, I love you too, okay? So please stop crying. You know I hate seeing that. Right after I said that, she instantly stopped, turned around, and looked at me like she was some anime girl, and I was even more uncomfortable and kind of pitying her at this point. She really didn't have that many people that loved her, because her dad used to abuse her, so out of pity I decided to just play along and make her happy even though I really only actually saw her as a friend. For three years, bruh? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Then that Saturday we were at the movies, watching the Twilight movie that had come out, because that was literally the only thing that she wanted to see, of course. So that's all I'm going to say for now. There's a lot to remember, but let me say that there will be a reason why her name is Twilight Beard. What? I thought the movie was it. <laughs> you don't really need anything more than that, OP. What's in a name? <laughs> I'll just say that she thought I was a werewolf and that she was a vampire. God. <laughs> I'll give you more info about that next time, so I'll post more soon. See you guys next time. I guess I do kind of get why OP just kind of went along with her. If he is confused about his sexuality, he's like, well, I don't seem to like any other girls, so this one will, will fill the hole in my heart or something like that, but for it to carry on for three years, dude, I, I, I don't know how to completely process that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? And the fact that it all started through like blatant, obvious emotional manipulation. He's like, okay, yeah, totally. I love you too. And she just stops crying immediately. That's something my two-year-old does. He's like, I'm so sad. Please give me chocolate milk. I'm crying. And then you give him the chocolate milk and immediately he's just like, ha ha ha, I got you. <laughs> what an asshole. And uh, I can only think that Twilight Beard is even more of an asshole because this is not chocolate milk, okay? This is a human being. <laughs> so I guess this is just like, you know, the intro. We're just getting into the cringe, boys. So let's uh, hoist up our belts or whatever we do and uh, get into story number two. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> I dated the leg beard for three years out of pity, part two. Hey everyone, kind of surprised that people liked the first part of this, so I might as well continue it, right? Alright, so here's a little warning. This is where it starts to get really bad, because she showed her true colors once I had agreed, reluctantly, to date her, and I became more involved in her life. There will be a few new characters, so here's the cast. OP! Hey, welcome back. Twilight Beard, oh goodness. Older bro, OB. Twilight Beard's older brother, who basically defends Twilight Beard against their father until I got involved and then we both had to. He was pretty cool, was a football player at the local high school, and was pretty cute. Him and I actually became really close and he thanked me in secret for pretending to date her. Satan's asshole. <laughs> Twilight Beard and older brother's father, who used to be in the military but was discharged, apparently, for assault against a commanding officer. He's just like the worst type of person you could ever meet. And last but not least, Luna, L, Twilight Beard's other half. Uh oh. <laughs> this takes place after the date that we had that Saturday. Older brother had called Twilight Beard and said that he'd be picking us up since we were heading over to her house after the movie. She was holding my hand as we left, completely nerding out over the movie, mainly about how hot the fur. I mean, Jacob was! Which, to be honest, he was. <laughs> After a couple of minutes, older brother pulls up and we head over to his car. Now, older brother was always the one to pick her up from school, and she always looked happy when she saw him, which I thought was good until we stepped into the car and I could tell that something was wrong. Older brother, hey Twilight Beard, once we get home, I'm gonna need you and your friend to quickly and quietly go into your room. Until I say it's safe, alright? Twilight Beard had frozen in her seat while I sat there confused. OP, what's wrong? Older brother looked at me and sighed, turning to the road and just driving off. After a few minutes of me trying to get a response from the frozen girl next to me, older brother spoke up. Older brother, 
Our dad had gotten into the liquor cabinet somehow, and now he's like totally wasted. Let's just say he starts being more abusive than usual. You've seen our bruises, right? He says as Twilight Beard pulls down on the hoodie, trying to hide something. I didn't want to press the issue further, since it seemed like at that moment she wasn't going to be able to talk about it. After a bit, we got to an apartment complex and parked at one of the first buildings. I'd gotten out, and when I let Twilight Beard out of the car, she grabbed my hand and squeezed it. I looked at her, and she looked like she had ice in her veins. It didn't help that her hands were so cold. Twilight Beard, Good. Could you please stay close to me while we're in there? She sounded terrified. Oh, this is so sad. I feel bad for the leg beard now. I nodded after a minute, and we followed older brother, who had gotten a pretty good lead on us. He probably wanted to gauge the situation first before we got to the door. After a few minutes of him opening the door slowly and looking inside, he had us slip in before him. As soon as I walked in, I saw this large mountain of a man laying on or crushing the couch, with quite a few bottles scattered all around him. I also noticed the distinct smell of liquor in the apartment. My mother was a chef, and she kind of taught me how to notice certain smells and how to improve your sense of smell to use as a tool in cooking, since smell, along with other details involving the ingredient, are important for being a good chef. We crept along the wall with Twilight Beard leading me towards a hallway. When we were close to it, we heard a thud, looking over to see the large flesh pile groaning on the floor. Older brother mouthed at us to run as the creature stood up and looked over at us. He had grabbed a bottle on his way up. I tried moving Twilight Beard, but she had frozen and just wouldn't move. Satan's asshole. Who the fuck is this? Yeah, where's my waste of flesh brought in here? He slurred as he gestured towards me. Satan's asshole. Looks like a fucking to me. Now how about you get away from that bitch and get the fuck out of my house before I break you? He yelled and tried throwing the bottle at us, but missed, only because older brother had tackled and rushed us to a bedroom before either running into his room or trying to distract the guy from the fact that we had ran. We got into her room and I shut the door and locked it, turning around and breathing heavily. I had no idea what the fuck had just happened. I noticed that Twilight Beard was slouched over on her bed, her hair covering her face. OP, uh, Twilight Beard, sweetie, is everything all right? She stood up, looked at me with dead eyes, and spoke in a kind of terrifying tone. Be quiet before I tear your throat out. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. Twilight Beard, or whoever the hell, went over to the dresser and pulled out a knife. I was freaking out even more than usual as she took her hoodie off. She had dozens of bruises and cuts all over her upper body, it seemed. She then walked over to me and stared me in the eyes. Listen here. My name's Luna. I'm the part of Twilight Beard that comes out when she gets more scared than usual. She describes me as a vampire, but I hate that. I'm more of a coping strategy. A way of her trying to deal with her anger. Shoving you in here with me instead of Twilight Beard's brother putting you in his room was a mistake. Now prove to me that you won't hurt her before I make you. I was kind of freaking out inside of my head as this was happening. I was extremely confused, scared, and wanting nothing more than to just go home at that moment. OP, okay, just please don't hurt me. Put down the knife and let's have a discussion about how I want to help Twilight Beard through this, alright? I was just shaking while saying this. Luna glared at me, grabbed my arm, and put the knife to my wrist. Luna, How about you answer my question and stop shaking like a frightened dog? She said coldly. As she was about to move the knife, there was a knock at the door. Older brother, Hey, OP, I'm sorry, but you'll have to head out while you can. My dad left, so we have a bit before he comes back. Twilight Beard then snapped out of it and dropped the knife, looking at it while shaking. OP, all right, just give us a sec. I heard him walk down the hall while Twilight Beard looked at me. Twilight Beard, Did she hurt you, my vampire half? <laughs> oh, God damn it. The crazy just keeps piling on. OP, no, but she did call me a dog while putting a knife to my wrist. Her eyes widened. 
Twilight Beard. So, I was right about you? You're a werewolf just like I thought? She asked hopefully. I was so terrified of this girl and full of pity at the same time that I couldn't think straight. OP? Uh, sure. She then smiled, hugged me, and that was when I heard older brother knock at the door again. She let go of me and smiled. Twilight Beard? Well, it seems like you need to go. Please text me later, my little werewolf. <laughs> what a switch. <laughs> I was in no way little. I was sort of in shape due to the fact that I love playing baseball and running, plus I was taller than her. But still, OP said, all right, I will. She then kissed my cheek and I walked out of the apartment with older brother. On the way to my place, he apologized for what his dad had done and said that he was glad to at least meet the guy that Twilight Beard had been telling him about. Older brother and I talked about what we each liked, joked around, and mainly him trying to calm me down. I could tell that he was the most normal from the entire family. <laughs> After the 20 minute drive was over and I was dropped off at my house, I immediately walked in, walked up to my room, and collapsed onto my bed, with my dog curling up next to me. I fell asleep just a few seconds later. When I woke up, I got out a notebook and wrote down everything that had happened, and swore to write everything that happens with that family down. So there you have it, part two of the pity saga, and let me just say there is still a lot more, so bear with me as I dig through my old notebooks. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. So you mean to tell me that OP just was strung along by this fucking maniac for three years out of pity? Yeah, I pity her, so I'm gonna put my life in danger. I'm getting like major nope vibes from this, you know? <laughs> and then also the part about the notebook smells pretty fake to me. He's like, yeah, dudes, I wrote all these stories down in a notebook that's totally real. <laughs> and I'll tell you some more of these wild and crazy stories that I wrote down in a notebook that is totally real. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I ain't buying it. Like, this is the sort of situation that scars a person for life. You know, you, you probably wouldn't need a fucking notebook <laughs> to remind yourself of the madness that you just experienced. This is the kind of experience that you lay awake at night a decade later and think of before you fall asleep. And you're like, wow, that bitch was super crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if the experience was real at all, but I'm getting some uh, sprinklings of misgivings, you know. But I suppose all shall be revealed in part three, and perhaps we can be thankful that a part four never came along. Or maybe it'll all turn around and I'll be super hungry for a part four. I don't know. I can't really judge it quite yet. The first story was okay. The second story, I'm like, <laughs> majorly fake shit third story i i guess we'll see how far it can devolve <laughs> so let's not hesitate any longer and we shall jump right into this thing three long years of pity dating three long posts okay never mind <laughs> so here we are again i've read through a bit of my notebooks that are totally real since after the event that I told you guys about last time, I started keeping a journal on me at all times. It was totally real, by the way. And I... <laughs> I'm such a dick. I'm sorry. I have more to share today, and today will be slightly more tame. Thank God for that. So here's the cast list for this chapter of pity. We got Gay Boy. He likes running and baseball. Twilight Beard. She likes anime and not washing. <laughs> Older bro was a football player and kind of cute. Jenny Bear, a girl who's a year older than us and who I met in high school. She'd become pretty close with Twilight Beard while I was on vacation during the summer between middle school and high school. She's a really great writer and is the complete opposite of Twilight Beard, especially since the two of us are really good friends now. Crazy Penguin, Jenny Bear's really cute Latino boyfriend, now fiance, who was really nerdy. He's a minor part in the story, but is a major player later on. And last but not least, we've got Luna, Twilight Beard's other half, completely psychotic and scares the living crap out of me. This takes place the following school year, since after going over to Twilight Beard's, I never went over for the rest of middle school. She would always go over to my place, where she would still turn into Luna if she was having a really bad day. 
Nothing had happened to me over the summer since my family had gone on a trip to Norway to visit family. We only do this trip like once every five years. I'm gonna assume OP went on that trip with his family since he's like young and stuff. <laughs> Unless we're having like a home alone situation. The morning that school had started up again, older brother picked me up. I sat in the back with Twilight Beard in the front. My house was on their way to the high school, so it didn't cause any problems for them. I gave Twilight Beard a kiss on the cheek. By this point, I'd become a pretty good actor, mainly because Twilight Beard pushed me into drama in middle school. Also, since older brother and I worked out a little deal about half a year after we started dating. The deal was that as long as I dated Twilight Beard, made her happy, older brother would work out with me to get me into better shape. Which I agreed to because one, he was about two years older than us and was in amazing shape. Two, he was really hot. <laughs> and three because most of the time he would work out shirtless. Plus he had a tattoo, and I have a thing for tattoos. That's definitely worth risking your life for, OP. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> During the ride to school, Twilight Beard had told me about a few friends that she had made, which worried me in a number of ways, and she'd been waiting for me to get back so I could meet them. Anyway, we arrived at the school after a few minutes, got outside, and went into the school to have breakfast. My high school offered breakfast to students, according to older brother. Older brother had to head off somewhere, so I sat alone, with Twilight Beard on my arm at the lunch table. By this time, she had already gotten into the anime Black Butler, and was just talking about it while I maintained a small smile plastered on my face. As she was talking about me dyeing my hair black to look like Sebastian. <laughs> Which I was not okay with because I like my dirty blonde hair. My hair's my baby. Mess with it without permission and you get a shoe in your eye. A shoe in your eye. Say that again for the people in the back. <laughs> she stopped and waved at someone. I looked towards where she was waving and I saw a pale skinny girl with long black hair alongside a cute Latino guy who was a little shorter than the girl. They walked over as soon as they noticed her. Two of them sat across from us and the girl spoke up. Jenny Bear? Hey Twilight Beard! <laughs> this must be the boy toy that you was talking about! Twilight Beard just smiled and looked at me. Twilight Beard? Yep! He's my little wolf! She purred the last word, which made me want to punch myself in the face. God, OP, I know that feeling. <laughs> the girl also looked a little sorry for me. I kept my mask on and introduced myself. They introduced themselves as Jenny Bear and Crazy Penguin. OP, so how'd you two meet Twilight Beard? She told me a little bit about you guys, but not that much yet. Crazy Penguin. Oh, we met at the bookstore. Jenny Bear and I were going there to grab a few manga and a few books. While we were looking at the fiction section, Twilight Beard came into the aisle looking for a Twilight book. And she noticed Jenny Bear's necklace and said that she loved it. He then recounts the extremely interesting conversation, I'm sure. <laughs> which included Twilight Beard interrupting every few seconds to say something about what he had misremembered. Their conversation boiled down to Twilight Beard nerding out about Twilight, and then Twilight Beard giving them her number. After a few minutes of talking, the bell rang, and the two of them gave me their numbers. Near the end of my homeroom, my phone vibrated, and I carefully took it out of my pocket. It was Jenny Bear. Jenny Bear said, Hey, OP. So since I can be honest with you and not Twilight Beard, let me just say that she is like extremely annoying. I really am surprised that you can like still stand her. I looked up and saw the teacher facing the board. So then I slightly looked back down and messaged her back. <laughs> OP, you could tell I was acting, huh? If you think she's annoying, why are you friends? Jenny Bear, Crazy Penguin was like pitying her. And now we can't back out. You? OP. Same. Pity and fear. Jenny Bear. Fear? Oh, well, we'll talk about it later. Anyways, please keep it up. She was so different today. She didn't look or sound so down. And to be honest, I, I think it's kind of nice to see. 
Yes, I just want this girl that I find annoying to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, the teacher called me out and gave me a warning. The rest of the school day consisted of me trying to avoid Twilight Beard in the halls, but somehow she was outside almost all of my classes. She also had the same lunchtime, and at the end of the day, I had to meet her outside of school, where we had went inside that morning. Twilight Beard was waiting at the door. I put my mask on and walked over, with her hugging me tight when I got to her. We talked for a bit, and the entire time, she looked like she had something on her mind. Older brother showed up and drove us to my house. We went inside, and I was immediately attacked by my boxer, Eddie. I raised him from a puppy, and he thinks he's my brother, basically. I said hello to him, let him out back, and Twilight Beard dragged me into my room. At this point, both of my parents were at work, and my sisters were at a friend's house. When we got into my room, I dropped my backpack on the desk by my door, and I sat down on my bed. Twilight Beard was messing around with something in her bag while biting her lip. OP, uh, everything alright? I ask. She then freezes and looks at me. Her eyes were dulled, and my asshole clenched to the point. <laughs> <laughs> Clenched to the point where it could turn coal into diamonds. Luna had showed up, and I was scared. She looked at me with a smirk. Luna, Good to have you back! I missed my little plaything! She said as she pulled a small square out of the bag. Luna, Took this from her bro! Thought that we could use it since I want to do something! Permission is not required! She smiled widely at the last part. My eyes widened as she began to crawl onto the bed to the point where she was straddling me. She then sat back and reached for my belt. OP, whoa there. Thought you wanted to save yourself like I was. I frantically yelled as I grabbed her hand. She then glared at me and grabbed my arm, digging her nails into it. Luna, she was, but <laughs> I'd rather not wait. Besides, she messed with you while you were asleep before, so that whole saving thing is just bullshit. I could feel my arm bleeding, and I was panicking inside again. At that point, my phone rang, and I quickly pulled it out of my pocket. It was older brother. I answered with hope in my mind and put it on speaker. Older brother, Hey man, remembered that my grandma's in town. Twilight Beard will have to leave. I'm currently waiting outside. OP, Sure thing, dude. By the way, I'm being sexually assaulted. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> As I hung up, Luna glared at me, and at that moment, her eyes lit, and she looked down at my arm with fear in her eyes. Twilight Beard. Oh my god, not again! So, 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 so sorry! <laughs> oh, she yelled as she let go of my arm. I told her about needing to leave, and she agreed. She washed off her hand, grabbed her bag, and ran out of the house. I just grabbed the med kit that I kept in the closet, patched up my arm, and got to work on my homework. This is the end of part three, where we got some new people. Found out Luna wants to rape me. <laughs> and found out how sharp her nails are. I hope you guys liked it, and I will be back with part four at some point. See ya. I just don't know, man. <laughs> If there was a part four, I guess I would read it, sort of out of morbid curiosity, and hopefully after two years, OP's like writing style has improved vastly. <laughs> because these are these are tough to read, I'm gonna tell you that. I had to do a lot of improv and like, you know, fix up the things that he was trying to say, but at the end of the day, I, I guess it could be real, you know. This girl is suffering from abuse at home, and maybe she does have a split personality or something like that. The way that the split personality is delivered and introduced and all that shit is like super clunky, super heavy handed, <laughs> which makes me think that it's not real, but I don't really want to shit on somebody else's experience just in case it is, you know? Obviously OP never came back. I'd like to know what sort of timeline this takes place on. I mean, I, he said that he had gone a summer, so I guess one year has passed, so we're like a third of the way through the story, maybe. Part of me wants to see the story get finished, while the other part of my brain is screaming at me not to read any further because I'll end up getting a brain aneurysm from trying to figure out what OP is actually trying to write. <laughs> oh, 
The biggest part that makes me want to like turn in the opposite direction and run away from this series of stories is the fact that dude is just sticking around because he thinks the brother is hot or some shit like that. He's like, yeah, I'll subject myself to sexual and physical assault if if I can work out with this hot shirtless guy. Like, <laughs> have you ever seen thirst so strong? <laughs> It's a wild story, but I, I don't think that I buy it 100% completely. I'd give it like, you know, maybe 30 to 40% realism. I think I think most of it is, is fake. But you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe regardless of how you felt about the story. Just let me know what you thought about my delivery, you know, and maybe share the video around if you should like. Everybody loves some cringy legbeard tales, whether it's the OP or the legbeard that's actually being the cringy one. <laughs> and in this story, I think we got the best of both worlds, <laughs> or the worst of both worlds as the case may be. <laughs> I hope you check out the links in the description as well. There's some stuff there that wasn't on the splash page from earlier, such as my wife's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X, my personal subreddit, r slash Red X reads, and my Teespring shop if you're trying to rock that merch. Hell yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, and we've also got my Patreon down there. How could I almost fake forget? <laughs> <laughs> You're seeing some names on the screen. Those are my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. And I, of course, would like to thank all of them, but especially Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Ferret, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, Candy Sora, DigiNZ, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Lone Island, Shara, Marvy the Moth, Ms. Monday, Silent Revolver, and JM Kuhn. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. <laughs> Your support on the Patreon is massively appreciated, like super, super, especially because some of these stories are sort of edgy. You know, we get demonetized every once in a while, so it's a big, big help. Obviously, if anybody else can help support, that is massively, massively appreciated. But if you can't, then don't sweat it too hard, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you will need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands all the time, always. But also take some time out to do something that you personally enjoy today. Because always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely definitely deserve it. I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.